so the first method for the day, our fourth method total, is completing the square. <laughs> Basically, completing the square, you're taking a quadratic that cannot be factored, and you're forcing it into not only something that can be factored, but it factors into a perfect square. Note that we are moving our constant c to the other side. That's going to help us. Now, the name completing the square basically comes from geometry. Say you have this, this large rectangle x squared, and then your x value is an even smaller x, a smaller uh, rectangle. If you put it together, it just creates a rectangle. Now, if you were to cut that b in half, stick it here on this side on the left, and then stick it underneath, you will get almost a perfect square. Don't mind the dimensions looking a little bit off. But it's a perfect square with a spot missing. We need that little piece to complete the square. <clears throat> so essentially it's coming from geometry. Now algebraically what happens is you take this factor here, x squared plus bx, you're adding a new number, b over 2 squared. Now the reason why you do that is because now this can factor into this, a perfect square. Now again, like on all math, if you add something to the left of an equal sign, you also have to add it to the right. So essentially what I just did here for you is create a formula for completing the square, which is here. So you're going to go from this quadratic, x squared plus bx, notice that c is on the other side, so I'm not setting it equal to zero, and I'm turning it into this one here, where I have an x plus b over 2, that whole thing squared, equals c plus b over 2 squared. Like so. Here is the complete the square formula. So look at this example, x squared plus 4x equals 5. I'm going to plug it directly into that formula. Note what the formula, all you really need is what? B and C. So let me look at B. In this case it's a 4. This part here, x plus b over 2, so it just becomes 4 over 2 squared. So in that case, it's x plus 2 squared. So I took this that could not be factored and turned it into a perfect square, x plus 2 squared. I made a change on this side. I'll also have to make that change here. The change here becomes this b over 2 squared. So 4 over 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So this turns into a 4, and I get 5 plus 4, which is 9. Now I have something a little bit nice and neater to read than something up here. Now again, note, for this particular problem, you may want to graph this. I'm just showing you a different method besides graphing and using quadratic formula. <clears throat> so here, here I go. I've turned this one, and I complete the square, and I get x plus 2 squared equals 9. Now, question comes, how do I solve this for x? That brings us into our next method of uh, solving for x, solving a quadratic, is the square root property. So notice, with completing the square, you have to use this process to get here and the square root process to solve it. And the square root process basically is, how do you go from a square root of x to just make that x? Well, you square that square root. How do you get from an x squared to just an x? Well, you take the square root of x. What happens is, if you can remember from algebra 2, the inverse function inside its composition, it cancels itself out. The inverse of a function inside of that function cancels, and you're just left with an x. <clears throat> so when we're left with something like this, x squared equals 9, how do you get rid of the square? What's the opposite of square? Square root. So I want to take the square root on both sides. That square root will cancel with that square, leaves me with just an x. Now note, if you take the square root on both sides, the square root on the other side must be accounted for the plus and the minus. That's because we are squaring on this side. I can square a positive number and get a positive number. I can square a negative number and get also the same positive numbers, right? Like 4 squared is 16. Negative 4 squared is also 16. So when you square root both sides, this right side has to account for plus and minus. So what is the square root of 9? That is a 3. So I get x equals plus 3 and minus 3. Does that work out? 3 squared is 9. 
Negative three squared is also a plus nine. Please don't remember, please don't forget about this part right there. <clears throat> like so. Now, let's go back to that original problem. X plus two squared equals nine. How do we solve this now? How do you get rid of this square? We take the square root on both sides. Again, note that on this opposite side of my square, I have to account for the plus and the minus. So now this square cancels out with this root, and all I'm left with is x plus two equals plus and minus, what's the square root of nine? Three. And now you just get x plus two equals plus or minus three, so we solve it for x here. And I get x minus two plus three equals one, and x minus two minus three equals negative five. <clears throat> so I get one and negative five. Now, like I said, normally with this type of problem, here, x squared plus four x equals five, you would move that five over, set it equal to zero, graph it, and you'll get your one and negative five. But if the problem is already set up like this, x plus two squared equals nine, it's a lot easier just to go ahead and solve for x by square root both sides than it is to graph this and look for x-intercepts. It's all how the question is set up dictates which method you may want to use to solve it.